Ta -da. And I will mute your microphones first so that there isn't any background noise. You can unmute yourselves whenever you want to speak without any problem. Just try not to do it all at once. I, there are a lot of new people here, especially from Pakistan, thanks to uh, hopefully a promotion that, that we did. And I want to say a couple of words about what we are, uh, what we do. I hope you have all seen the presentation, but just in case you haven't, a very, very short introduction. Let me share my screen. So this is a public speaking and leadership club. It's called Speak to Lead Madrid. It's a member of the Agora Speakers International Foundation. And as you've probably seen from, a pres from the presentation, we are an international charity, an educational nonprofit that aims or whose goal is helping people develop their public speaking, communications, leadership, critical thinking, and debating skills. All our activities are free, but we do require that you have some commitment because uh, the number of people that can attend the meetings is, is limited, meaning that, and besides it's useless if you don't have that commitment. It's just like being uh, trying to learn the piano or trying to learn to play tennis by just going to the court uh, once a month or <laughs> once every two months. Of course, you are not going to learn everything. Practice, learning a skill requires practice. Agora is present in over 70 countries through, we are already close to the 160 club mark. Due to the current situation, we are mostly meeting online, but that is not the usual way in which operate. Usually clubs do meet physically and uh, that's the best way actually to practice public speaking. We can still extract some value out of these online meetings. You will see some of the roles and some of the activities that we do. But of course, there is nothing like the personal experience. Also, there are some things which you cannot practice online. You can try, but they are never going to be the same, especially things concerning the interaction with the audience or concerning the body language or how you move through the stage. All these things are important. And no matter what you may be hearing about, wow, the world's gonna change and everything's gonna be different after this pandemic, I think that is just uh, not the way humans are wired, especially we are creatures of habit and um, sooner that we'll, we'll, we'll even know it, we'll be back to our old habits. Now, the way we, we learn here is not through, let's say, teaching sessions or webinars or seminars or anything like that. Club meetings are not classes. And instead, we rely a lot on peer feedback, on practice plus peer, plus peer feedback. When you become a member, you have access to all our educational materials, which are online. They are free as everything else. You learn from them. You prepare different roles, as you will see in this meeting. You present or carry out those roles in front of the club, and then you get feedback. Although today we'll have a new section, let's see how it works. It's called speech writing that will resemble somehow uh, a small workshop. Now you will see that our, our meetings, unlike the first part, which was more or less free form that Capil led, it was just about socializing and networking. Our meetings are structured, meaning that there is an agenda, there are different sections that we do. And in each section, each section has very specific goals, goal in terms of training in terms of the skills we want to develop. We have many possible sections and uh, due to the limited time of a meeting, which is usually between one and a half and two hours, there is, there's never going to be enough time to have all the sections in a single meeting. So we have to choose for every single meeting, the meet sections are different. You will see that each of, in each of those sections, there, is a, there are specific roles people that have specific tasks to perform. And this is something that each one 
each of you chooses for, for himself or herself. Meaning it's up to you if you want to do a particular role for next meeting, just to say it. It's not that someone, let's say, some central authority assigns roles to people. It all depends on the kind of skills that you, you want to learn. And of course, the recommendation is to try out all the roles, including this one, which I'm out I'm carrying out now, which is the meeting leader, which basically acts as a some sort of host or conductor of the meeting. So without further ado, I'm going to give the floor to our first supporting role, Adil, who's going to perform the grammarian role today. So Adil, can you please explain us what your role is about and what will you what will you be doing today? Oh. Uh, thank you, meeting leader. Uh, so I am grammarian today. I have to introduce a word today which you'll be using further in the meeting. The word I have selected today is strive. S T R I V E, strive, which is a verb and it means keep on trying, try to improve yourself, to be committed towards some kind of goal, and try to do efforts to achieve something or some goal. Like if I use it in a sentence, I am striving to become a better speaker. What does that mean? Okay. So we, we, we all have to use this word in today's meeting. Try. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons we why we do the grammarian role is that is because we strive not to memorize speeches. In fact, there is nothing worse in public speaking than having a memorized speech and, as I usually say, going onto a stage and vomiting it onto the audience and it sounds like super unnatural. So you have to learn to speak, um, let's say, of your cult in an improvised way naturally. There are only a few parts of the speech that you need to memorize. Things like your quotes, your data, of course, opening and conclusion, but the rest should be natural. And one of the ways we try to ensure that is by having each on each meeting a word of the day that you should strive to use during your speeches. Now, I'm not seeing Yasil here. He was supposed to be our timer. Okay, so he's not here. Great. Capil, you don't have a role, right? <laughs> During the meeting, I mean. Yeah, I, I don't have a role. Great, so how about you do the timer? <laughs> it doesn't require any preparation. Okay. Great, okay, so okay. I'll give the floor yeah, now. <laughs> and this is one of the things, by the way, which uh, you need to learn to do as a meeting leader, which is improvise and, um, push forward regarding of, of what happens during a meeting. So, Mr. Kapil, can you please share with us what your role is about? Uh, so, uh, the role of the timer is basically to have the on time, and see that all sections of the meeting are running on time, and a the timer also has warn people like uh, uh, what are their timings at the start of the meeting and uh, at uh, some point uh, before like each uh, section has different timing so there is a warning uh, for the speakers to wrap up their uh, speeches and then at the end there is a red signal where uh, they have to warn the speaker that the timing is up. And at the end of the meeting, they have to give a report of the timing, like uh, how well we did at the, uh, on the, in terms of timing during the meeting. Over to Alexander. Thank you. Thank you, Kapil. Uh, do you have any timing signals that you can use? 
I don't have the background which generally we use in the meetings, but I can use it on my mobile. Okay, could you explain the meeting, the signal, timing signals that we use? Uh, I can only speak uh, with that uh, option. I can only speak that uh, 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 time uh, which is left for the meeting or uh, like for the speech. For example, if there is a seven minute meeting, uh, seven minute speech, I can say at uh, six minutes that uh, I can have a warning uh, sign. I think I think your connection is breaking down. By the way, anyway, yeah, you, usually uh, had what, some... it, it's okay. Let's continue. Usually, we have a, a set of three timing signals during each of the interventions. All the interventions are timed, meaning that you can't speak forever. Even me as a meeting leader, regardless of the temptation that I might have, I shouldn't do that. Usually, we do. We use for online meetings we use Zoom backgrounds. So for example, when you have reached the minimum amount of time that you should be speaking, the background could change to something like this. We use a green signal in physical meetings. When you have one minute left to speak, we use a yellow signal. And when your time is over, we use a red signal. A red signal means you should be finishing already. If after 30 seconds, after seeing the red signal, you haven't finished, the timer can perfectly well kick you out of the stage, usually by starting to clap. And the rest of the club will support him. We do that because in real life, you don't have unlimited time to speak. You have a very precise interval on during which your, the spotlight is on you, and that's your chance to show and transmit your message. If you don't manage to do it, tough luck especially on media, it goes to commercial break, it goes to someone else and it's over. Oh, great, Kapil with the mobile, excellent. Now, moving on, we have our, one of the, th the sections that we have is called the thought of the day. The th thought of the day is a short speech, especially for those who are still shy about speaking in public on any subject that you may like. It's called Thought of the Day, but it can be about anything. The movie of the day, the actress of the day, the place of the day, quote of the day, the book of the day, whatever. It's a speech that lasts between a minimum of two and a maximum of four minutes. And today that row is going to be performed by Anastasia. So Anastasia, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, when I start, uh, I started learning to drive five years ago. And it was probably the most difficult period in my life. It was a kind of nightmare for me. And when I looked at the people around me who already could drive or who learned to drive much quicker than me, I was really jealous of them. And that almost made me give up and stop driving. But at that particular moment, my dad told me, just uh, look at our one year old nephew. He just started uh, doing his first steps and pronouncing his first words. It doesn't matter how many failures or what kind of failures he did, he continued. The most important thing, how enthusiastically he did it. He enjoyed the learning process itself. It was an adventure for him. Why, when we grow up, we lose this feeling? Why we consider learning something new, like something difficult, like a problem, like the biggest nightmare in our life. 
and how often we avoid learning something new. But look at the situation from child's perspective. Let's enjoy the process. And you will see it becomes much more easier. And instead of nightmare, you will face an adventure. And sometimes you will even desire to continue, to prolong the learning process, learning period. By the way, I became, I became a very confident, good driver. And I learn new stuff every day, like a one-year-old child. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anastasia. After each speech, we usually have either an evaluation, if it is a speech from what we call the educational path, which are more, uh, which are longer speeches that have to fulfill specific goals, or if it is the, something like the thought of the day, we usually have informal peer feedback. So, does anyone does anyone wants to want to share their feedback or their impression on? Okay, Florina is already raising her hand. So, by all means, Florina. <laughs> um, hello again. I want to say that I like very much uh, the speech of Anastasia because I am learning how to drive right now, and I find it very difficult. And I'm still thinking if this would be for me. And to be sincere, what you said right now, I found it quite encouraging because I started to, let's say, uh, agree with the men who says who say that uh, women are awful drivers. But now <laughs> I I start to think that maybe this is not really the, the truth. Thanks, Anastasia, for your for your nice words. Thank you, Valina. Anyone else wants to share their feedback? You can just unmute yourself. Don't be shy. Learning to give constructive feedback is a skill that leaders need to possess. I would just like yes, to I want Anastasia. to share something. Oh, so yeah. okay. okay, okay. Let's let's do it by in order. Uh, Humayun, I think. Yes, sir. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, I have learned from Mem that whenever we are anything new, so first we should not be worried about that. And the second one is we must have a process that we follow in order to learn that particular skill. And she has wonderfully said that when you have made a process, then you should enjoy it. Yet when you would enjoy it, then you would automatically start learning. And the last but not the least, as she has masterfully conveyed her message that you should turn your nightmare into an adventure. In this way, you would be able to enjoy and improve that particular skill. That is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Humayun. Well, that was quite a speech in itself. Uh, next, Chris, I think you wanted to say something. Anastasia, just very quickly, it was a great speech. I particularly like the way that you, you you spoke clearly and not too fast. So I could understand everything, which is really great for a person like myself who struggles a bit with all the accents. So well done. I think it was great. Thank you. And Gabriela, I think you also wanted to say something. Yes, I wanted to uh, congratulate Anastasia for her, um, the, the degree to which she has um, mastered her um, her speeches. I mean, it's the first, uh, the third time I think I have uh, given feedback on her speeches, and I have noticed every time this gradual growth in the quality of her voice and um, the pauses she makes and the clarity of her language. So, congratulations! It's it's better and better. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gabriela. Uh, indeed, I, I was thinking about that exactly about that especially in terms of how you use the pauses in this this time to draw to focus the attention of people or to emphasize certain parts of the speech and you were much more fluent your speech was a, a bit on the short side though it was barely two minutes try, try to like 
speak a bit more about the subject. I think it deserved it. And as an additional point for improvement, I would suggest to, uh, as I always say, try to transmit experiences and vivid images into our, into our brain. For example, I would have expanded the section about the child learning the, the a process or learning to do something or your own experience by being more detailed about it or more descriptive. Like imagine yourself in the shoes of, and I do that and you fall and you have no choice but to stand up. And that would have allowed you to, to have a longer speech. As a general note to everyone, one of the things we try to do during these peer feedbacks is to offer the speaker suggestions for improvement if you can think, think of, of something. We don't do that from the viewpoint of, let's say, public speaking experts or let's say professors of rhetoric, but we do that from the point of view of our own experience as members of the audience, how we received the speech, how we felt it. Of course, if we felt if we felt that the speech was perfect, then fine, then that's perfectly fine. But usually what, stop, what stops us is not really that we found the speech perfect, but we are afraid of hurting the other person or maybe offending her or something like that. And it's not about her. We need to learn to give constructive feedback where constructive means have, saying what we found in the speech that could be improved specifically and in which ways we could suggest for that improvement to happen. We usually don't comment on, especially for beginning speakers, we don't comment on the content. You speak about whatever you want to speak, that's your choice as long as uh, it's not hate language, any kind of speech is, is allowed. And of course, the things that we point out for improvement should actually be actionable. I mean, you, if a person has a very coarse voice, there is nothing he can probably do about it. So there's no point in saying, oh, you should have a more melodical voice. Well, sorry, that's the voice I have. So, but other than that, you shouldn't be afraid. Usually what we call, what we usually say is that peer feedback, constructive feedback is actually a, a gift that you receive and it helps you improve. Because if, if the only thing that you get in each meeting is that you're perfect, then what's the point of attending the meetings at all? Now, we have a second thought of the day that is going to be semi-improvised. Shakya offered himself kindly to do that. So Shakya, the floor is yours. Or maybe it isn't. Shakya, where have you gone? Are you there? I only see a pretty picture. Yeah. Okay. Uh Yes, I'm here. Uh, can you just give me some time? I just, I'm looking for the timer. Uh, all right. Okay. Chawla, okay. Can you just uh, start the timing right now? Because I was looking for you. I know I just saw that you were already started the timing. Okay. You don't usually do that in broadcast media, you know? <laughs> By the way, can you turn on your camera, please? Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I'm unable to turn up. I mean, today my uh, webcam is not working today. That's right. Okay. So I'll just do my uh, thought of the day in this way. Uh, if you all may please excuse me for that. So <clears throat> once upon a time, there was a, a rabbit and a, a tortoise. So one day, uh, rabbit challenged these tortoise for a race and then these uh, and this tortoise also accept that that challenge and went for the race and everybody in the jungle said that uh, the rabbit is going to win but still tortoise went for the race and my dear friends i hope all of you have learned, heard about this story and you know how the how this story has been ended where the the tortoise out of nowhere won this race 
So there is a thing that we can learn from this story. What if that tortoise stopped and listened to everyone in the jungle when they were saying that you won't be able to win this race with this rabbit. Your chances are slightly, not even slightly, it's nowhere to win. So if thought is ever stopped and listened to this, uh, everyone's, uh, what everyone is going to tell, so what will happen? Then we won't be able to hear this story as well as this. Because Tortoise has been already given, given up that thought of raising. So in our life also, whenever we try to do something, we will always hear people saying that you are not good up to these things. Are you sure that you can succeed in this way? And people always judge in many ways and saying that this is not good for you this is what this is your uh, this is what you are really capable of like that but it's you the one who knows what you can do and what you can't do like that. sometimes we also put ourselves down in everywhere we sometimes have the chance even out of the odd we can come uh, top to the level and out of nowhere we can surprise everyone this has been done not only in his story it, this has been done in many ways in our life i mean in our real world also we have these kind of examples where out of nowhere some people have come from from the losing end to win these uh, races win the trophies like that so in this our life as well we had to whatever happened we can't give up and we can't lose our hope so and other thing is that like the thought is he went in his own pace and he won the race so what i am going to say to you all as well you will be you all and us all have been will be having a our own pace let's go in our own pace and win our own race over to you alexander thank you so much sakya so feedback time who wants to share their feedback on sakya's speech and maybe i will give a couple of words Okay. I uh, I liked uh, your calm, confident manner of speaking. Um, and I really enjoyed the story what you told to us. And one uh, recommendation what I can give you. Um, there was too many details. I think it's opposite <laughs> to what I did. I was too <laughs> short, and uh, there were too many details. You can. Uh, Keep it a little bit shorter and then it will be even better than you did it today but in general i really enjoyed your story thank you very much thank you anastasia thanks anastasia anyone else nope we are full of sh oh for now of course please well again i like very much your speech because to be sincere, I was feeling a bit down these days, and I'm very surprised and happy to see how motivating the speeches are today because they help boost my confidence. So, again, thank you, Shakya. And also, I like very much how uh, you uh, make references to some specific tales and you try to put the, the knowledge from the tales in our daily life and how to take um, knowledge from them and how, uh, how we can put them in practice. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Florina. Florina. Anyone else? Uh, 
now? Uh, yes, please. I I want to add something. Uh huh. Please go ahead. Uh, excellent. Uh, I really appreciate the way uh, Sakshia has uh, told us the story. Uh, one, two, one to two points. I have noted that uh, his voice clarity and uh, pitch of the voice with emotions uh, in the story. Uh, he raised his voice uh, and uh, lowered his voice as per the scene of the story. And uh, the other thing, he relate the story with our real life. It's too much good. Thank you. Thank you, Tahir. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Sakshi, I see, I see you waving, but I'm not sure if you want to say something or is just like doing stuff. <laughs> you, you need to unmute yourself first before speaking. No, we're not hearing you. You should activate your microphone. There is a microphone icon somewhere. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I want to say, well, uh, Shakya, you have you speak really well. It's nice uh, how you told uh, stories to everybody. Initially, I think you were shivering, but uh, you know, uh, you speak uh, very confidently. And the point I like that uh, you don't have to depend upon the others how people think about you. Uh, the, it matters what you actually think about yourself. You know for how you are capable. Uh, you know your capabilities. You know your abilities. So no need of anyone you know to, uh, that he was going to tell you. So really a motivating or inspirational uh, thing and you did your job well. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, Sakshi. <laughs> in, indeed, a couple of words from me. First of all, to thank uh, Sakya for offering himself to perform this role. He just did during the, during the beginning of the meeting, so he hadn't had much time to prepare the speech itself. That in, in itself is quite a, a thing. I, I felt that there was three parts to the speech. In the first, you were a bit rambling around. You, it wasn't clear. You were telling us about the story of the tortoise, tortoise and the hare. But it was a bit like start and go, start and stop, start and stop. A bit unfocused. Then you got to a second part where you were telling us about the let's say the motivational part of the speech about whether not to not to listen to others, to move forward regardless of anything. And uh, there it showed that you were speaking from your heart and it was so much more natural, so much more fluent, and it was so much better. And then at the end, that usually happens when you don't have enough time to prepare. In this case, you had zero time to prepare. The, the ending was a bit too dragged. It seemed that the speech was going to end, then it didn't really end, then it continued for a bit more than it was going to be to end. There were several like potential endings, but it just that the end never came and that for me it diminished the effect of the of the speech. Usually that's one of the things we usually say here. The beginning and the ending of the speech are one of the most important things that you need to have perfectly clear in your head, even memorized, because they are the most important parts of the speech. But I do want to highlight the, um, what I mentioned before, and that is that when you speak from your heart, when you speak about things that matter, and I know that Shakya is and uh, wants to become an even better professional speaker in the motivational arena, when that is something that you feel strongly about, your speech is so much more natural, even if it's unprepared, because you speak about things you that they are your passion. So thank you, Sakya. Thank you very much, Alexander. And now we have an interesting section <clears throat> in which you people that were feeling safe without having to do anything but just listen are going to be, are going to have your bubbles bursted, burst, sorry. And this is what we call the hot questions section. Today's hot questions section is going to be run by a very experienced member, so I'll just let him explain what this is about. Chris, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexander. Good morning again, everyone. 
how the hot question section works is I ask a question, which may be easy, it may be difficult, and the person that I nominate needs to speak for one and a half to two minutes on that subject. I'm not a great believer in asking who's prepared to do it. I much prefer just making it a hot question. I'll, make, I'll give you the question and then I will, after giving the question, so you can all panic a little bit, I will say who it is that is to answer the question. I'm going to have a variety of different questions since today doesn't have a theme. And uh, I believe I have 15 minutes overall, Alex. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, about 15 to 20 minutes, yes. Okay, so I've got uh, perhaps uh, five questions I can ask. Let's see. First of all, uh, I'll ask one which I know this person feels quite strongly about this. So I think it's a good, a good one to ask. In South Africa, there is so-called fair discrimination, which allows for, for instance, job reservation. And it's recently during the COVID-19 pandemic, it has also allowed the support of small business only owned by one section of the population. The rest of the population's business has to just die. And I want to know how you feel about this. And the person to answer is Adil Ahmed. Okay, Chris. <laughs> so, it's, uh, should I start? Yes. Okay, okay, couple. Okay, it is very sad that we are uh, facing this uh, pandemic and we are having alternate problems because of this pandemic. Uh, the one problem is uh, loss of the jobs and loss of opportunities these days uh, around the world. So I feel really sad that uh, people are losing their jobs, people are even discriminated uh, to um, be what I can say that uh, d discriminated, not to appointed on the jobs, not to given the opportunities, better opportunities to have the same jobs or the same way they were getting previously. So I think that it should be ended. I mean, discrimination of any kind, especially in jobs, it's not allowed. I mean, all over the world. I mean, uh, on the humanity humanity uh, grounds, people should uh, create more opportunities to uh, create, to give or provide more jobs that people should survive during this pandemic. Uh, overall, I, I can also uh, suggest that uh, people themselves can also not to look for the jobs, but to create different opportunities to have different businesses i mean if they are uh, getting the discrimination from different areas they try to uh, create opportunities for themselves and to to be more independent in terms of jobs and financial thank you thank you very much adil uh I see that it's a point that you've already given some thought to. So the next question, you know, sometimes when you have a really big task on your hands, people say it's important, it's important to approach the big task just as you would if you were eating an elephant, one bite at a time. The question is, which end do you start and why? And Maham will answer this one, please. <clears throat> uh, can you repeat the last part of the question, please? The last part of the question uh -huh. is, when you have to eat this elephant one bite at a time, which end do you start and why? Definitely, we will start from the shorter parts 
that will lead to ultimately the bigger ones and that's all mm, sorry i just I, this is my first session i don't understand quite Okay, thank you, Maham. Uh, at least you had a start there, which is always a brave thing to do. I'm sure on your next session, you'll find it a little bit easier to go a bit further. So perhaps I should then just go a little bit further. And um, a social worker introduces, uh, so as a social worker, you need to introduce to your fellow workers a visitor to your group and you need to particularly speak about this visitor's great ability to help the downtrodden and Tahir perhaps you can help us on this one Are you with us, Tahir? He's muted. Unmute yourself, Tahir, first. Although that's uh, a good yes, technique. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can uh, you repeat the question, please? Okay, I'll repeat the question. Tahir, as a social yes. worker, you need to sure. introduce to your fellow workers a visitor. And you need to concentrate on his great ability to help the downtrodden. And the visitor is Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, I have to introduce introduce my uh, group fellows uh, about the visitor. Yes, you do. Is this Chris? He's just arrived now. Uh, Introduce him. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would uh, elaborate his uh, work uh, his uh, contributions uh, towards his uh, profession and uh, his background, his uh, from which uh, fr uh, from where he belongs to. Uh, that's all from my side. Okay, thank you, Tahir. Um, Alexander, may I give a pointer to people on maybe how to handle this a bit better? Sure, it's your section, so you're the boss. Great. One of the tricks in doing these uh, hot question speeches, impromptu speeches, is you have to just place yourself in that situation, use your imagination, and step right into it from the beginning. So uh, rather than say what you would do, just do it. Okay, so I know these are quite difficult, but that's what they're about. So I'm going to try another one. And this one, I'm going to ask a school principal. You too have a visitor to your school, and you have to introduce the visitor to your students. And in this case, your visitor is the president of Spain, Pedro Sanchez. And Fatima, it's up to you to do this. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I would love to introduce him, but the thing is, I don't know much about him. So it will be like, I will be uh, randomly giving information. Uh, it would be better if someone I actually know, so I could introduce that person. Uh, so if I can change that, I would love to do that. 
why don't you introduce your own president or prime minister? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, students, you must be very well aware of uh, our prime minister, Mr. Imran Khan. He has been playing cricket for so many years. He has got us the World Club uh, in 93, and then he has been into politics. He's tried to do the green pro, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the green project where he planted around thousands of plants which is actually helping us a lot and he's trying to uh, uh, bring a lot of construction uh, what no, sorry uh, i'm not really prepared for this okay uh, he's uh, he's a great person who actually wants to bring good to pakistan he won't really cares for the people he really cares for the students. He can actually cares for the youth. He's not just talking about present. He's looking into future. And uh, the only way he will be successful is that he gets support from you people because you are the future generation. And uh, we can bring about a change if we can support him and do as he's saying, and but with our own will and understanding. And we can achieve the best. So Mr. Imran Khan, up to you now. <laughs> Well done. I think you did very well there. And uh, I think I've got a couple more I can do. So I'm going to ask the next person, why on earth would you want to build your house in this locality? When you've, we have heard you saying that this is going to be your dream house. You need to defend the reason why you want to build your house at this locality. And I'm going to ask Mandimbi, and the locality that you want to build your house is on the slopes of Mount Krakatoa. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? <laughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, first of all, excuse me, um, it's my husband account. <laughs> I, I immediately connected to his account. So uh, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Aina. <laughs> uh, next time I will deconnect and uh, do with my own account. I'm sorry for this. Uh, secondly, would you please uh, repeat the question, please? Okay, here's another trick for everybody. You need to listen to the question and imagine that you are the one who's going to be asked. Don't ever think you're going to get off. So the question is, you are wanting to build your house at your dream house at this locality. And you need to defend it because people are saying, why on earth would you want to build a house here? And the house you want to build is on the slopes of Mount Krakatoa, which is one of the world's biggest volcanoes. Oh. <laughs> Um, uh, the reason why I would like to build the house uh, beyond that volcano is that we can, first of all, produce energy, natural ener energy beyond it, and then we can cultivate uh, organic uh, uh, foods, uh, like in Iceland, they are already doing it. And uh, they, because they don't have vegetables like tomatoes or cucumbers, and um, my, uh, most of the time they, Im they, they import their foods. And uh, there, there are some research, research that proves that we can use the volcano to produce uh, things naturally and especially uh, food. So I think if I would like to, to convince people the reason why I build my house uh, above the mountain, the, the volcano is that uh, I can take um, uh, natural benefits from it and uh, I can uh, get, for instance, during the, the, the winter, I can uh, get access to natural uh, heat. heat. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yes. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Sorry. 
It's a tough question. Right, the last question, and then we will call it a day. We have another visitor. It's a visitor to your Agora Club. And in this case, you have to, again, introduce a visitor and explain to your club all the good that, that this person is doing for your country. The person is I.B. Ahmed. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. And the person to answer the question is Aida from Addis Agora. Uh, hello. Thank you, Chris, for giving me this opportunity. I am the, I was the president of the Addis Agora Club, one of the uh, clubs found in Addis. And in this club, what we, I'm very proud of serving this club for one year as a president. And today I am here actually to introduce you to our prime minister, Dr. Abi Ahmed. And when I invite him to this stage, I want you to give them a very warm of applause. But before that, I would like to take one minute to actually say something, how grateful I am on behalf of this Agora Club that he has joined us on this session. Dr. Abe is not only famous in Africa, he is very famous in the whole world because he has won a Nobel Prize and that has given us a very good position in our political relationship with many countries. He has a very wide dream of be, uh, building Ethiopia as a green as a green and planting trees as uh, for everyone, uh, motivating everyone to plant the trees. And that really motivates the people to actually contribute something back to the community. And the reason he is here today in Agora is because he wants to appreciate how we are working on our self-development. Public speaking, truly speaking, it's about who we are, it's how we express what's inside us. So he has made so marvelous speeches in all over the world, and he actually chose to make many of his speech in his local language, Amharic, so that he can communicate better with the community and with his people. And the way he communicates is he used a lot of storytelling, and he also used gestures feelings in his speech. I know he is going to make us proud by the next speech that he is going to make here. And I am very proud to represent our Prime Minister, Dr. Abi, to the stage. Back to you, Chris. That was brilliant, thank you. And with that, I would like to hand back to our meeting leader who seems to have vanished. Is he still around anywhere? Oh, there he is. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, Alexander, I don't know why positions on the screen move so much. Yeah, it's uh, it's a mess when people disconnect and reconnect, everything changes. What <laughs> well, so thank you so much, Chris. One of the reasons we do this section, by the way, is because you have to be prepared to answer all sorts of questions all sorts of questions in your professional life. Imagine you're meeting with your boss uh, during a short trip or the short networking event or even in the company's elevator and he just asks a random non-professional question, non-technical, non-job related and you do have to answer something. It's not like uh, uh, you just stay there staring at him. And by the way, Fatima, you wouldn't even know how often it happens that you have to introduce someone that you know. Well, I don't want, I want, I don't want to use expeditives here, but you know nothing about. So you have to be able to pull that one off. You need to be able to introduce people. It's actually an art. It's something politicians do all the time when they speak a lot, but they don't say actually anything or what they say is universally applicable to everything. So you could just introduce someone like that, even if you don't know him. Oh, here we have the president of Spain, as we always, as you all know, he has been working very hard against this pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just go on forever <laughs> without any, any, saying actually anything useful. But it does happen. I mean, imagine you're, I don't know, the host of a conference. It has happened to me. 
and uh, one of your speakers gets, gets gets replaced by someone else because well he wasn't available the company sent someone else and you know nothing about that guy and you still have to introduce him so you can't just say ah <laughs> And uh, yeah, <laughs> next time. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so the goal is trying to speak for at least one to two minutes. You have to make some sense. It's not only about uh, answering the the question. Now we're going to have a a try a different new section today. I. It's like a mini workshop, except that we are not going to have a, an expert or a teacher, and it will be delivered every time by someone else when there is this section. Let's give it a try. I call it uh, speech writing, and uh, here is how it's going to work. The person doing the speech write or leading the speech writing section will do some basic research about some area of public speaking or speeches in particular. It could be speech openings, it could be speech closings, it could be rhetorical devices, it could be vocal variety, it could be, I don't know, using metaphors, using quotations, whatever, and deliver a short presentation of it, on, on it. And then the interesting part is that there will be a challenge. If the subject is, for example, as it is today, on speech endings, then I will present you with a speech from someone and you will have to figure out possible endings for that speech. If the topic was something else, using, for example, rhetorical devices or using vivid language, you still have a speech and you have to augment it or improve it using that particular subject. Let me share my screen and let's get started. Let's see how it works. It will be the first time. So today I want to focus on speech endings, which is something I feel we need to work on. Now, speech endings are exceptionally important together with speech openings. There is a lot of research suggesting that the most important parts of a speech are precisely the beginning and the ending. And it's due to something that is called for speech openings, the primacy effect, meaning that we tend to focus on what we hear first and for speech endings on what's called the recency effect, meaning that we tend to retain or remember the last thing that we hear. And here you have an example of an experiment that measured how many words people recalled or remembered from a speech based on where they were placed in that in, in the speech at the beginning in the middle or at the end so as you can see primacy and recency or beginnings and openings are equally important now before going on how to on to how to end speeches i want to share a few thoughts on how not to end them endings that we see that we see too many times the first of them is what I call the Woody Woodpecker ending. And it's related to that cartoon. I don't know if you know it, in which Woody Woodpecker shows up and ta -da 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 -da, that's all folks. It's just the ending that you do when you don't really have an ending. It's like you go on and then you say, and uh, this is everything I have to say. So thank you so much. No, <laughs> this blows up the whole thing. Remember, according to the recency effect, it's super important that you have a strong ending. Another ending, which is also quite commonly seen, is what I call the war crash ending. <laughs> which it means, what it means is that the speech just ends up abruptly. You go on and then you stop. <laughs> as if you just got, as if you just crashed into a wall. And there is no like separate ending as such. There is no conclusion, there is no, anything to indicate that the speech ended other than the fact that you stopped talking. That's also not a good way to end it. Now, we have also the opposite kind of non-ending. 
the again this is an invention of, of mine the riding into the sunset ending it's one of those endings in which the the cowboy in this case rides into the sunset on and on and on for 10 minutes without actually ever disappearing from the screen and you are just sitting there wondering when this whole thing is going to end so running into the sunset is basically dragging the ending on forever it's the opposite of the car crash it's just you feel the need the urge to say something more and you go on and then on and then on and then on and yeah it's all the ending but there is not an ending as such now this is another dangerous kind of ending it's usually seen when you use presentations and it's what i call the clip art ending because it's so abysmal it's so terrible that is just i don't know it's it it, it instills shame into the audience for being for, for the presenter using such a thing and it's slapping some gracious clip art or some rubbish thank you or animation into your presentation as a way to end it you think you're being funny you think you're being original but in fact it speaks about exactly the opposite it speaks about sloppiness about childish ending about not being serious you don't need to have that kind of ending sort of especially when you're doing presentations another kind of ending that we usually see again is what i call they killed kenny ending it's cliches cliches are things that would have been good year endings at some point of time in history but the problem is that they have been abused so much to this point that they're practically worthless case in point for example if you have in mind to, to end with shakespeare's quote from hamlet to be or not to be that is the question please don't because it has been abuse or any other reincarn reincarnations of that quote like uh, to market or not to market that is the question or to research or not to research that is the question or to quarantine or not to quarantine that is the question this is the cliches it's been so abused that it has lost its meaning by now poor shakespeare must be rolling in his grave by the amount of abuse he has endured and there are many other such let's say quotations that have been abused to death like mm, feedback is the breakfast for champions or especially motivational cookies that don't mean anything please don't use them because they they're just like hot air balloons they don't mean anything now how to end a speech properly remember the ending should be strong it should be memorable it should be something that people take away from your speech it should be something that they remember that they keep thinking about even after they are leaving the conference hall or whatever you're giving your speech and the classical one of course is the call to action the call to action meaning that you ask for people to do something and to do it now not uh, think about doing this no no do it now because it's urgent, because it's imperative, because we need it. And there is probably a, a very good example of that kind of ending in um, Steve Jobs' commencement address at Stanford. And he uses a different technique of which I'll, I'll speak, I'll talk about uh, a bit later. And I just want to read for you at least some of the parts when he talks about a book that um, he remembered and there was a particular inscription that summarizes what he has been talking about throughout the whole speech which is stay hungry stay foolish it was their farewell message as they signed up and he repeats that stay hungry stay foolish and as i always wish that for myself and now as you graduate to begin anew i wish that for you stay hungry stay foolish it's a call to action it's a call it's a call on what to do or what your attitude towards life and toward, towards learning should be meaning never become complacent with yourself or with your status always stay on top of things stay hungry be inquisitive be hungry for thirst for for knowledge another very useful kind of ending is projecting a powerful image usually a powerful image of 
how you want things to be, an image of your vision, an image of the world you want to create, an image that will make people dream about it or wanting to be in that kind of world. And of course, I can think of no better example of that kind of ending than Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And he ends with this message. It doesn't end with I Have a Dream. It ends with an exact description of what world he wants to live in. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, when from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the world of the old Negro, spirit, Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, Almighty, we're free at last. Another very powerful ending is a challenging question. That is especially useful when you don't want to give the conclusion to the audience and instead you want them to work on it, to, to cause, to instill in them some yearning for an answer or resolutions. You want to make them feel uncomfortable about something, but you don't want to give them what they should be doing about that. And a great example is Kennedy's inauguration address with a very famous and abused quote, but it wasn't abused by him because he created it. It, was abu it is abused now when every single guy delivering a speech is abusing that quote. He could do it because it was the first time. You can't use that thing, but you could use alternatives of the same way. So basically he asked super famous words, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. So that's a challenging question that leaves the audience thinking, oh my goodness, what, I, what can we do about this thing? What can we do about the problems that he has just spoken about? Another very powerful technique it can be used anywhere in the speech, but we usually see it a lot in, in endings, is repetition. We've seen it in um, Steve Jobs' commencement address, stay foolish, stay hungry. And there are a lot of speeches in which you will see it, including, for example, Christ, uh, Jesus Christ's Sermon on the, on the Mount. But there is a very prime example of, of repetition in the famous speech by Winston Churchill or about blood, sweat, and tears, where he repeats several times, we shall fight them here, we shall fight them there. Uh, this was in front of the House of Commons. We shall fight in France, we shall fight them on the beaches, we shall fight them on the sun. And it's a continuous, let's say, crescendo or increase of the emotion, repetition, repetition, repetition. Another typical ending, a bit less powerful, but nonetheless interesting. It's what is called closing, closing the loop or tying in with the beginning. It's when you end the speech with something that very closely relates to the beginning of the speech. It is useful if that closing the loop is also a call to action or a challenging question, but it is not really necessary. For example, one of the most memorable speeches in American war history, in early American war history, is the surrendering speech by Chief, uh, Chief uh, Joseph of the Naz Indians. And it has become immortal. He was known not exactly for his cruelty, but for, for his heart. And in fact, his surrendering speech to the American general uh, Howard is a prime example of that, where he just says, he starts with, I have it in my heart, I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting, I'm tired of this war. Our chiefs are killed, looking glass is dead, the who who shoot is dead, the old men are all dead. It's the young men who say yes or no, he who can, he who, then the young man is dead. It is cold and we have no blankets and the little children are freezing to death. And then he goes on and in the end, he repeats the same idea. 
Hear me, chiefs, I'm tired. My heart is sick and sad. From wherever the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. And finally, the least effective, I would say, of the strong endings is ending with a powerful quote. Now, I would advise not to do that, except if you have no other choice, because it kind of steals the show from you. It should be your speech, so it, the, the ending should be your own words. But if you have no other choice, you can end with a powerful quote. So for example, if you are fighting, let's say a, a measure with, with which you disagree, or if you're fighting some cuttings of the freedoms that we are enjoying, Imagine that you were wanting to fight the, the quarantine, although it would be a bit of a far shot, but you could end with, for example, the famous quote of give me liberty or give, or give me death. So remember, we have several ends to, several ways to end powerfully a speech. You have the call to action, you have closing in the loop, you have repetition, you have a challenging question, you have a powerful quotation, and now I will present to you a challenge. And I'll give you some time to think about it. It's not going to be improvised. So I will give you between five and 10 minutes and you will have to come up with an ending to the speech I will present. You cannot, you should not, you will be only lying to yourself, uh, Google that speech because I've removed the actual ending from it. So it's one of my favorite speeches. I've already done a speech analysis here in some other sessions. It's the speech that Ronald Reagan gave after the Challenger disaster when seven astronauts died uh, and it was shown on live on television. And there were a lot of children watching because one of the teacher, one of the astronauts was going to be, was Krista McAuliffe, who was a, a teacher that was going to do live sessions from the, from the shuttle. So here is the speech. I will leave the screen on. It's the full speech, except for the last two paragraphs that are the ending. And the challenge is to try to write down an ending for that speech. Consider the context in which you are. The whole nation is mourning. The space program, the American space program is under question. And you have just had a fatal accident live on TV in front of a lot of children. So I will give you 10 minutes to think. Write it down. I insist it's not a, it's an exercise in speech writing. It's not an exercise in improvising. And then let's see how you did in terms of writing the conclusion. The conclusion shouldn't be longer than a paragraph, no more than three, four sentences.
Um, excuse me. Uh, could you yes. please? Yes. Uh, could you please uh, repeat exactly what? we should write because you need a to bit lost. <laughs> yeah you need to write an ending for that speech that is ronald reagan's speech uh, addressing the nation after the change in the change of disaster and you need to write a paragraph that ends that speech it doesn't usually end there um, i've removed the ending and you should try to use one of the techniques that we saw either a call to action or a powerful image or a challenging question Mm -hmm. or closing the loop or a quote although well being written no it might work a quote as well so it's a change this it's about the change uh, disaster the challenges disaster there was a the, the american space shuttle a spaceship blew up in during the launch and seven people died live on television okay 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 thank you Okay, so are we more or less ready?
I uh, I can share what I wrote. Okay, let me stop sharing this so that no one is distract distracted. So, yep. Um, who was that? I didn't see who was speaking. <laughs> well, half of the people Hi, left in, in panic. <laughs> okay, Kapil. <Gabriel. laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, this is what I wrote. Uh -huh. We, the citizens of this great country, now need to share this vision with future of our country, our children. They must be ed educated to understand this vision. Okay, cool. Thanks. That was great. What kind of ending was that from the list that we saw? Uh, it was call for action. Because we, uh, we need to share it with our future generation. So it was called to action. Uh, okay, just have in mind that usually calls to action have to be specific. Uh, you, you ask for them to do something very specific. Okay, who else wants to give it a try? Um, I can try. Okay, uh, Anastasia, let's mm. see. We will bear the strategy in our memory forever. Say again, sorry? Uh, we will be as a strategy in our memory forever. Uh, will... I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure I understand it. We will be in our strategy. Uh, we, are, we will be here the strategy. Strategy. Uh, tragedy. Oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, tragedy. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you for translation, yes. <laughs> we will be here this uh, tragedy uh, in our memory forever. <laughs> Okay, oh, what kind of ending would that be? I think it's, it's kind of repetition, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, okay, the, the repetition should always, uh, let's say, be a tool for supporting something. But, but not an ending itself. But you're not repeating here anything, right? In other words, what he said before. Okay, then it would be, if it was with time with the beginning, then it would be closing the loop. OK. Yeah, try? Yeah, sure, please. We have experienced a terrible accident. The nation is in mourning together with the families of these seven brave people. However, we will continue to grow the space program. We do this so that we can grow our knowledge of the universe that we live in. We continue so that each and every citizen will know that we stand firmly in the conviction that we will strive always towards a better future, a future in which we hold freedom and progress before us as landmarks to guide our way. Wow, impressive. And you even managed to use the word of the day. Yes. <laughs> I, <noticed. laughs> I, I did do that on purpose. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be like unreal. <laughs> we should vote you. Yeah, a great ending indeed. Let's see, Leroy, you haven't spoken a word. We should fix that. <laughs> okay, I try. Sure. Today is the day we must never forget. Never forget that uh, tragedy has happened and it will happen. We must never forget to mourn and mourn for the loss and the sacrifice of others. We must never forget of their achievement and their dedication and, and their professionalism. They're taking our country to the space, to exploration. The last 25 years in our space program, we must never diminish our dedication and our commitment as a great country. America is great because we must never forget we are a country of pioneers. We must never forget that we are a country stand united together uh, with those who have gone before us. They have given their life. We must also give our life, our best, our uh, support to the future next 25 years so that our space program will be successful. 
we must never forget, America, you are great because you are a pioneering country, a pioneering people. I'm proud of you. Thank you very wow. much. Wow, impressive. <laughs> you, you, you do have a liking for Trump, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because during our last session, when we voted to throw you off the balloon, you tried to persuade us with this make it, make it great again. Didn't work out very well. <laughs> I was safe and you fell out. But, well, great, great conclusion by, by all means. Congratulations. Okay, let's hear from, let's see, Tahir, what about you? Do you have an ending? Yes, I have tried. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, at this stage, uh, when we lost uh, our heroes, and uh, I asked my, myself a question, is it the time we should think uh, to close our program? And uh, myself answered that we are the pioneers we are the leaders, we have heroes. We will continue because we have to lead the world. We have to lead the world to explore the universe. Uh, I know boats are saved at the source, but these are not built for the source. These are built to travel in the sea. Thank you very much. Well done, congratulations. That was a great ending. Okay, we have time for one last person. Any volunteers? Okay, Aida. Go ahead. Thank you, Alexander, for giving me the chance. Uh, my conclusion or summary for this speech would be, our heroes died in trying to build a better world. Let's show them our gratitude and that we care for them. We will lower our flags the coming Monday, 29 of June, and remembering our heroes around in all of our embassies around the country, around the world, in our in all of our ships sailing in all the seas, and in all of our country institutions around this country. Back to you. Thank you, Aida. Actually. Let me share with you the real ending of the speech, and that I think we'll see it's a, you will see it's a mix between some of the ideas you shared. Uh, it ties with the beginning, not in an obvious way. You should, by the way, watch on YouTube the whole speech itself, especially because there are other characteristics that are important, like the somber tone and the bass and the fraternal tone in which he delivers it. But he starts with an a historical event, his speech, and he ends with a historical event. And he ends actually with a quotation from an American poem. Although he doesn't name it, he doesn't say it's a quotation as it, it should be. And he just uses one particular word combination. So I'll let you uh, read it for a couple of minutes. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed the the exercise and the the section. Let's see how it works out when someone else does it, because it's not, as I mentioned, the different roles in the meetings are performed by different people and they change constantly. So it's not me, the meeting leader all the time, nor me, the one doing the speech writing session all the time. Let's see how this works. And, with that, we move to the conclusion of the meeting. And first, 
And only <laughs> let's hear from our word of the day, Grammarian. So Anil, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, meeting leader. So, That was a crash in the wall kind of ending. <laughs> and I just used a quote from Steve Jobs' speech that stay hungry, stay crazy, and keep striving. That's my addition to this line, one liner. I hope you like it. Okay. I would have probably liked it as probably others would have done if we had heard it, but you froze up. So maybe you can repeat it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll just repeat it. That stay hungry, stay crazy, keep striving. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Adil. So how do how did we do on the grammarian and what of the day part of the meeting? I feel that it was okay. Uh, there were times when uh, people should I have used this word uh, because uh, in Anastasia's uh, speech and Shakya's speech, they were quite motivating. And uh, I, I was just thinking that they have, would have used this word quite few times. But uh, overall, it was it was good. I mean, few times it was used in during the meeting. OK, thank you. Kapil. Did you manage to keep any track of our timings? How did we do on time? You're muted, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure uh, because I uh, had no idea like uh, who was uh, going to have a prepared speech and what timings were involved. Uh, I, I was a bit nervous when this job was given to me with like a uh, impromptu volunteer. <laughs> so, uh, but then uh, during the thought process, I actually learned a lot. I uh, tried to use my uh, phone as a timer, started loading the background, and managed to download the red background, but not able to implement because I don't have a green screen today. So yeah, this is uh, the learning. Uh, what I enjoyed was this This is the learning process, like straight in the pool, do it, and you'll learn it. I'll be prepared for the next time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Kapil. By the way, this is like uh, what actors do or what magicians do when something doesn't go according to plan. The first thing you don't do is say that something didn't go according to plan because it only didn't go according to plan in your head. The audience didn't know what was expected to happen, so they can't compare. Well, maybe if they had been to a, a thousand Agora meetings, then they have, might have an idea, but it's not the case. So there is no need to say, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have done these other things. You just keep those to yourself. Instead, just focus on what you did which you, you did great. It's just the same thing when we say, never say how nervous you are, even if you're shivering or shaking, because the audience doesn't know that. You don't need to draw the attention of the audience to it. When actors screw up during a, a live performance, they don't just stop and say, oh, we should have said this thing, but instead we said the other thing. Apologies, dear audience. No, they just go on. No one notices. No, nobody ever, even if people notice, they don't care, actually. So general advice to everyone. Whatever happens, you just keep pushing forward and never stop apologizing for what just happened, unless it's something like super spectacularly obvious. In that case, you can always make fun of it and try to twist it as if it was something prepared. Oh, well, my trousers just fell to the floor. <laughs> I just wanted to draw the attention <laughs> of the audience because you're sleeping. <laughs> okay, and to conclude, I would like to give the floor to our new, the ones that remain. 
attendees, let's hear your feedback on how you saw this meeting and your impressions of it. Anyone wants to say a couple of words? How about Madame Huawei Y6 Prime 2019? Hello. Hi. Yes. My voice is audible to you people? Yes. Okay. This was very really interesting session for me and I've learned a lot. Uh, I must say this is very uh, interesting and I am impressed with your uh, lecture. That's all. Okay. Thank you so much. By the way, a uh, piece of advice. Don't be scared if you mm -hmm. see that people seem very experienced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if your first, it's, it's, if it's your first meeting, because this lab has been going on for maybe no more than two months, so mm -hmm. most of the people were where you are now two months ago. Okay. Except for some very accomplished and experienced speakers, but apart from that, it just shows up that it, should, it just shows that with progress and persistence and commitment to attending and actually doing things. I mean, not just attending as a spectator, you will improve. Mm -hmm. So don't be scared if you think that okay. uh, people are super proficient. Anyone else? Okay. Tahir, what about you? Can you share with us your feedback on the meeting? What's your impression? Uh, yes, uh, really appreciated. First of all, I would like to pay my thanks to uh, provide me this opportunity to learn from you great people uh, as well the other participants from all over the world, different countries, different cultures, different uh, mindset and different uh, professions. Uh, it, it is really a great place from uh, for our youth especially for our youth to learn in such a professional environment uh, I really impressed uh, your way of delivering a session plan and uh, the way we are learning different uh, skills like public speaking and uh, the questions mr. Chris <laughs> asked uh, spontaneously we have to attend the questions and it's really uh, a big 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 learning for us thank you very much thank you so much Tahir and with this I think it's time to end the meeting it's almost 12 well 12 in Madrid time just a short comment that you need to practice what I what I say is that this particular meeting for example was almost a disaster in terms of planning roles and leadership even but I hope it didn't show up that way for sure usually except for proving a point about what I said before I wouldn't even mention it but almost nothing went to plan I mean <laughs> we had to improvise the timer the old one didn't show up then well there are many things that didn't go according to plan but if you don't mention it, it, people won't know this because they don't know what was expected. It's only in your head. So thank you everyone for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. For the new people, I'll contact you on Facebook again using the page with the private message and we'll ask you there in private if you want to continue or not. And I hope you do stick and learn. And uh, when you feel empowered enough, maybe you will be willing to create your own club in your city and lead it yourself. So thank you everyone for being here and uh, see you next Saturday. Thank you, Alexander. Thank, thank you, Alexander. You, you need yeah. not have said thank that. Alexander. <laughs> it was a lovely <laughs> session. Yeah. Meeting went very thank well. Thank you very much. Bye bye everyone. Thank you. Have a nice bye. day. Bye bye. So keep safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.